All right, so we're staying with football here on the Sportsmax Zone. Just like the English Premier League, the Trinidad and Tobago Premier League title race has gone to the final day. Let's see how it's shaping up. All right, so on the table, AC Porto Spain on 41 points in first position, Police FC in second position on 39 points, Defence Force, they have 37. Club Sando round out the top four on 32 points. In fifth position, we have La Hoqueta Rangers with 28 points. And in 9th, 10th and 11th spot, Prison Service FC, Eagles FC and Central FC that has really been struggling this season. They have a total of two points. But let's take a look now at the fixtures for the final match day. FC Phoenix will be seeing Caledonia FC, point 14 up against AC Poro Spain. Club Sando, they play La Hoqueta, Police FC versus Eagles FC and Defence Force up against Conopia FC. For joining us this afternoon, Trinidad and Tobago football legend and our football analyst, Brent Sancho. Good afternoon, Brent. How are you doing? I'm great, thank you. Good afternoon to you and all your viewers across the various platforms. Yeah, always happy to chat with you here on the Sports Max Zone. This time we're talking about the TTPFL. And Brent, what a season it has been. I can't believe we're down to the wire. Just one match left. And just like Manchester City and Arsenal, at the top of the table, two teams competing very, very closely for that top spot. Yeah, certainly very much a repeat of last season. Of course, uh, Replacing miscellaneous police FC would be defense force because they eventually won on the last day against AC Port of Spain. Uh, we have a similar situation again this year where there are two teams vying for that uh, coveted trophy at the end of the season. Uh, AC Port of Spain is very much in the driver's seat as the table would have suggested and you would have shown. Uh, basically need to match any result that police FC uh, comes up with at the final day. All games, of course, being played at 4 p.m. local time to keep the integrity of the competition intact. Uh, but more importantly, uh, for Police FC, they have to win and hope that AC Port of Spain lose. Uh, so basic, basically, it's in AC Port of Spain's hands if they want it. Very similar to what we saw last year, because they went into the last game of this season uh, ahead of points against Defence Force. They eventually lose their penultimate game against Defence Force and hand it over the trophy. I think they're in a little bit more comfortable position this year, albeit, of course, it's still one day of football left and anything can happen. Yeah, of course. And AC Port of Spain will want to ensure, Brent, that there is not a repeat of any of the errors that, you know, caused them to lose out on that title. Looking back now at this season, as we get ready for that final match day, let's talk about all the right things that happened for AC Port of Spain that, of course, ensured that they're in a comfortable position this season. Yeah, they've, uh, they've been a little bit better as it relates. And, you know, talking to the coach on uh, the last match day that you're showing uh, the highlights of against Club Sando uh, before the game, he mentioned that they would have learned from what transpired last season. There's a team with uh, experienced campaigners in it, the likes of Dwayne Muckett, Rodam Favobaka, their goalkeeper, Marvin Phillips, uh, John Paul Rushford, just to name a few, a few uh, who have been there, done that, and have uh, certainly decorated themselves in the local scene. Uh, they, there is a feeling within the camp that they, they would have learned from it as it relates to what has made them good. Uh, they have gotten results in crucial situations, in crucial times, and their big players have stepped up to the mark. The likes of uh, Dwayne Mockett, who had uh, an injury hit season when he has played, uh, he has contributed significantly in very, very tight games. And I think that's been the difference uh, between uh, AC Port of Spain and the rest of the league is that when it matters, when a result was needed, they were able to conjure up something. It must be noted, though, Mariah, that all of the, the teams that have been vying uh, for the top spots have not necessarily shown the pedigree like a Manchester City or an Arsenal, meaning they haven't shown championship form. They've dropped points throughout against teams on the mid-table. Mid so it's made it very interesting. But AC Port of Spain has gotten the more consistent results when it mattered. Yeah, and the match that will, of course, matter this week will be AC Port of Spain versus Point Fourteen Civic. And Brent, you're a man, you're in the action. What type of game are we to expect? 
But when they played in the first round, it was a very tight affair um, between Point Fort and Civic. This it's Point Fort and Civic has been a very inconsistent team. When they're on their day, they are very, very difficult to play against. And uh, when they're not, they, they tend to roll over. Uh, so for AC Port of Spain, it's not necessarily uh, the trophy handover ceremony just yet. I do think this is a fixture that they would have to compete in. Although I do believe they have the quality within the squad to win the game. But if I'm going on what Point Fort and Civic has done, particularly in the second round, they've shown a certain level uh, of resolution. They've shown a certain level of capability of, of being able to get results, uh, that uh, Point Fort and Civic team. So it's not an easy game by, you know, in terms of the fact that AC Portsmouth just needs to win to win the league. I do think uh, that it will be a competitive game. I think it'd be a well fought game. But uh, AC Port of Spain will have to take care of business very early in that game and don't give Civic any reason to stay into the stay in the contest. Yeah, and speaking about competitive, the other fixture against a team that has not been very competitive this season, police will be playing Central FC, and I'm talking about them. They've already been relegated, and I was so disappointed just now, Brent, when of course I read all the points. Um, Central FC just only two points this season. Yeah, they've had a Central FC has had a diff difficult and disappointing season. When you look at the body of work that they've done since the inception into the league, they've been a, probably, arguably, one of the fastest trending teams uh, in football in Toronto Bay as it relates to the trophies. But they've not done so well this season. Remarkably enough, Mariah, this is a, a Central FC team that has a semi-final to play in a knockout competition. They've been able to do very well in that uh, knockout competition, but not so well in the league. Uh, they come up against a miscellaneous fully a miscellaneous fully FC team that has been very well. I believe they are playing Eagles with the fixture miscellaneous police FC. Um, but miscellaneous police FC Mara have been uh, very good, but not good when it matters. They drop points against Phoenix and Tobago, and that's the reason why they're in the position that they're in. They should have probably been done and dusted as it relates to winning this league, but they've dropped points over the last five games or so that has put them here. They've really lacked a real goal-scoring threat. And, and although that man there in your picture has done well, he has not played the entire season. He's had injuries, he's been in and out, but uh, he has not been able to contribute in the way that he normally contributes. And that's why they've looked a bit shy on the goal-scoring side of things. Uh, that being said, uh, police, uh, miscellaneous police FC would feel that they, they still have a chance. But it's difficult for them because, as I said, AC Port of Spain just needs to win uh, and they should be fine home and dry. Yeah, you know, Brent, I'm an advocate for the league format because I think it's just a fair reflection of what of the best team over the duration of a campaign um, rather than the playoff format um, where essentially you'll get there and then you try and peak and you could finish, for example, like in the Jamaica Premier League in sixth position and go on and win the title, which in my opinion is not necessarily a fair reflection of how good you have been or were over the duration of a campaign. Having said that, I can completely understand why, especially in a Caribbean context, um, associations may want to look at the player format. If you have seen the Jamaica Premier League matches in since the start of the playoffs, the, the crowd has been amazing. Um, it's something that we've spoken about with the Trinidad and Tobago Premier League. But I want to get from your standpoint, um, well, one, whether there has been consideration for the playoff format in Trinidad and Tobago, and two, whether you think it would be worthwhile looking in that direction. Yeah, that's an interesting question. As you know, there is a, Ricardo, there is a new executive that has been uh, put into power in April, I believe it was. Uh, and I suspect that there are conversations regarding uh, looking to revamp, looking to maybe uh, look at different directions as it relates to the league here in, Tr in Trinidad. So I suspect that uh, those sorts of changes will be communicated, will be discussed, uh, and will be looked at in terms of the, 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 the difference between a league format and, of course, the playoff. I think the playoff paints a narrative, and, and that's the difference, really. It builds the interest. It, it ha it's more fan-friendly, uh, and it, it works because it now puts a, an actual final to the day. Uh, we've been lucky here in Toronto to be aware that the games have gone down to the penultimate game. Uh, but uh, we've seen so many times where a league can be decided two, three weeks before the last game. And so the rest of the games uh, have no interest. And it also as well, to add to the, uh, of course, the argument that maybe playoffs is a better direction. Uh, the fact that teams that don't have anything to play for, uh, which we have seen here in Toronto to 
tend to, to turn the off what known and, and players probably have holidays in their mind. Uh, and because of that, the, you look at teams that probably competed a lot better in the first round, uh, don't have that same worry at all when it comes to this, the second rounds when there's nothing to play for. So maybe looking to play like against like, meaning teams that have something to play for at the end will drum up more interest and probably give a higher standard of football. So um, if there is arguments for that, certainly for the playoffs. And, and if you would ask me what my thoughts are, I would certainly go to a playoff format because I just feel uh, teams that have the same interests and are vying at the same point in time will give you a lot better competition than, than two teams. Uh, that certainly doesn't have anything to play for. Yeah, before your conclusion, Brent, I think I pretty much picked up exactly where you were going, which format you preferred. I think that's the format Mariah prefers as well. No, yeah, but... I think so, because it, it, it does. It paints a better narrative. And I think for, for the fans' perspective and, and for the fans, so the interest of, of fans, you know, you have to, you have to possibly look at that uh, situation. As I said, we're lucky here in Trent Tobago because the last two years it went down to the last day. Yeah. But it did come a situation where that doesn't happen. Then you have, obviously, a lack of interest for the last couple of Brent, years. Brent, quickly, in 10 seconds, and only 10 seconds, I know. I hope you know 10 seconds, um, talk to us yeah. about that Guyana versus Trinidad and Tobago game that's coming up tomorrow. It was a useful uh, game on Monday where Trinidad and Tobago won two goals. So won a lot of players that have not, uh, uh, of course, had their chance to play at the international level. One of the goal scorers is a, is a 30 plus zero, a 35 plus zero debutant and has done very well in the local league. So, and I think these sorts of games are, are, are critical for the development of the local talent who probably will not make it at the final roster for those games, but to keep them active and, of course, give them the opportunity to play international football. All right, Brent, you don't know 10 seconds, but anyhow, thanks very much. We'll chat again soon. Have a good one, guys. Mariah, you know 10 seconds, don't you? No. Oh. I, I get paid to talk, so I talk, 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 talk. Okay. All it's right. break time. I have to go now, though. We have to take a break, but we'll be right back.